Hey guys, welcome back to Bone Nose Tech Stuff. Today we're going to be looking at the CPU benchmarks for the Razer Blade Stealth. I've never done a CPU benchmarking video before, so this is the format that I'm going to be using today. First, we're going to do the IDA64 stress test for 10 minutes to see how hot it gets. Then we're going to do the IDA64 benchmarks, the performance test from Passmark benchmarks. Then we're going to do Maxon Cinebench benchmarks, and then the short but sweet CPU-Z benchmarks. The next two are for benchmarking the solid state drive. For those, we are going to use Crystalmark and SSD-Z. What I would recommend doing is downloading these programs yourself and testing them on your machine, and then seeing how the stealth compares. Let's get started. So we're gonna start off here on Intel's website, trying to find the highest operating temperature of our processor, or the T-junction temperature. We don't want to overheat our processor and damage it. It looks like it's 100 degrees Celsius, so now we can start our stress test. So this, is IDA64's system stability test. The first time I ran this test, I only had the stress CPU box checked. But even after 20 minutes, it still wouldn't go above 71 degrees Celsius. So I decided to check all the boxes except for the stress local disk box for this test to see how hot it would get. Let's fast forward a little bit because trust me, Watching this for 10 minutes is really boring. Holy crap, even sped up 2000% that was still boring. But let's talk about the results. The CPU and all those other things were pegged at 100% for 11 and a half minutes. And the highest temp we saw was 81 degrees Celsius, which honestly isn't that bad. But I will say that the top area above the keyboard around the power button was so hot that I couldn't keep my fingers on it for more than two literal seconds. As in 1 1000 to 1000. Next, let's do the IDA64 benchmarks. This is the IDA64 benchmarking tool. It is a paid product, so if you can afford it, you can get it. I did leave a link down in the description. I also will say that I am not affiliated with them and they did not pay me to put it in my video. I am going to speed this one up as well. I'm also going to leave the results up here for a second so that you can use them for your own comparison purposes. Next up we have Passmark's Performance Test version 8 benchmarking software. Passmark's Performance Test software is again a paid product and again I'm not affiliated with them in any way, and I did not get paid to use their product in my video. Also, this is the last paid software in this video. The rest are free. This test got a little weird partway through after the graphics test. It couldn't fix the resolution or something like that, and I ended up having to use the command prompt to restart my computer. So it looks like our pass mark rating is 1197.1 and you can use that if you decide to run the software on your own computer or you can look online to see if someone else has ran it on a different computer that you are looking to buy. After we restart my computer here we are going to be using Maxon Cinebench R15. Maxon makes great 3D programs like Cinema 4D. A lighter version even comes free with the newest version of After Effects.
today we're going to do the CPU first and then the OpenGL test. It looks like we ended up with 114 CB on the CPU and 16 frames per second on the OpenGL test. That kind of sucks. But up next we have the CPU-Z test. CPU-Z is a more basic benchmarking tool. It is really, really fast. Watch this. So we just go over to the Bench tab and then click Bench CPU and you're kind of just done. It's done almost instantly. It's really fast. So it looks like the results of that test are the CPU single thread is 590 and for the multi-thread it is 1858. And that's it for the CPU tests. Up next is Crystal Disk Mark. Crystal Disk Mark is a very popular disk benchmarking tool. I left the settings at the default of five passes of one gig so that you could test it on your machine at home or look up the results that someone else did on a machine that you are looking to buy. That's it for Crystal Disk Mark. You can see the results on screen and judge for yourself if that's good or not. The final tool we will be using is SSDZ. SSDZ is not from the makers of CPU-Z, but the UI is very similar and seems to be modeled after CPU-Z. And like CPU-Z, it is very fast and we will get our results very soon. It looks like that's it guys for our test today. Again, I just want to reiterate that the benchmarks are for comparison purposes. You can either run these tests yourself at home on a computer that you already have, or you can look up the results that someone else ran on a competing computer that you are looking at buying. I appreciate you guys watching. Please give me feedback as I'm just starting out. Feel free to check out a previous video that I did on how to get free swag from the Razer store with any purchase. And in my next video, I will be benchmarking games on the Razer Blade Stealth. If you liked the video, turn that gray thumbs up button blue, sub for more videos, and I'll see you guys next time.